Hello, everyone, and welcome to the BMC Exchange. Hope you all are doing just great. My name is Amit Maiti, and I'm an instructor with BMC Software Education Services. So today I'm going to walk you through the BMC Helix chatbot, in which we are going to understand what is the BMC Helix chatbot and how do we build one, how are we going to create a chatbot, how do we set it up, um, how do we in integrate IBM Watson with the uh, BMC Helix chatbot? Um, what are the various features of it? How do we integrate chatbot with BMC applications? How do we integrate chatbot with other applications? How do we integrate chatbot with a live agent? So that's what we are going to be talking about. So the Helix chatbot is a cloud-based application. It's built on the Helix platform, and uh, it's a chat application. However, it has the intelligence to understand your language, uh, natural language. So as a user, you would be interacting with the chatbot once it is set up, and um, you will be converse doing the conversation in your language. Uh, the BMC Helix chatbot supports multiple languages as of now. Um, the by default, you would have English, you can have Spanish, um, you can have French, and many more languages. So as a user, you are going to be chatting. You will be uh, placing your requests in the chatbot, and the chatbot is going to understand your conversation because it understands the natural language, and it will respond to you. It will respond to you with knowledge articles, it would respond to you with services, um, services that has been designed by your administrator or by the developer to be available in the chatbot. So it's going to ask you for confirmation, uh, whether to um, request or submit those requests on behalf of you. So that's what the chatbot does. So let's take, for example, um, I'm an end user and I connect to the chatbot and I ask a question, you know, um, my VPN is not ready or my VPN is not connecting or I have an issue with my VPN. So the chatbot is going to understand no matter what you type with respect to the VPN and either it's going to pull up knowledge articles and once it does, it will ask you, hey, uh, did this solve your issue? And if you say no, then it'll say, okay, could you just describe the issue? And it'll ask you more questions, and based on your responses, it's going to probably uh, submit a request on behalf of you, and then it'll confirm again. So that's what the chatbot is going to do. So the benefits of using this uh, Helix chatbot, the BMC Helix chatbot, is that you get immediate assistance, uh, something which you normally wouldn't get when you call up the help desk or you want to chat with a live agent. So probably sometimes or rather most of the times you have to be in the queue, you have to listen to some kind of a music. However, when it comes to the chatbot, you get immediate responses. So you say, hi, hello, it greets you, and then you type in your issue. It provides you with all the resources that you may need to fix your issue. So now when you get immediate responses, that really reduces the overall um, time in assisting you in, in getting your issues fixed. Now there's no manual intervention, so it actually leads to a reduction in human errors, a lot of uh, dependencies. And when you have all of this, um, it leads to a reduction in the company's overall costs and the resources that it uses in order to provide assistance to the end users. So the chatbot, once it is configured, will help you to have a wonderful conversational omnichannel experience. Okay, You will be able to, as an organization, get this rolled out uh, much more faster. Users will be able to adopt. The reason being is that this is based on cloud and it understands natural language conversation. So it is AI driven, it is AI powered, hence it would understand all different languages in which you would have configured and all the different ways in which you chat with the bot. So when it comes to overall the um, 
conversational experience. Uh, it supports multiple languages, just like I said, English, French, German, Spanish, and many more. And you just configure it with your IBM Watson. You just define that, what language you wish to configure it, and you build them and you integrate them together. So all the conversation that happens between you and the chatbot is going to be real-time translation. So there is no delay. Uh, whatever you type is being translated. So whatever you type could be a structured way, could be a non-structured way. However, the chatbot is built in such a way that it understands all of your conversations and will provide you with solutions. And it can chat directly with you I mean, if, if your organization says, okay, we are going to use the chatbot directly, end users will chat with the chatbot directly, that's fine. Or if your organization uses uh, other communication channels like Skype for Business or maybe um, Slack, you can integrate Slack, Skype for Business, uh, SMS Twilio, Microsoft Office 365 with the chatbot. And through these channels, you will be able to interact with the chatbot. So it's going to be more of an indirect, uh, um, indirect chatting with the chatbot. And as an end user, you will be able to email these conversations. You will be able to share these chat conversations on an email. If you feel that the chatbot is not able to respond to you, is, is not able to provide you the things you need, then you can always ask for a live agent. So either you ask for a live agent or sometimes the chatbot also would refer to you for a live agent. It will say, hey, you know, uh, I'm sorry I didn't understand your question or I didn't understand. Would you like me to transfer you to a live agent or a live support agent? That depends on the configuration, whether your organization and the administrators have configured that or not. So it also provides that kind of an experience, conversational experience that from the chatbot, you can go directly to the live agent, you finish your conversation with the live agent, you come back to the chatbot and you can close it. You could also change the way the chatbot looks like. So you can change the out of the box avatar, um, you can change the icons um, which are out of the box, you can change the color, you can change the logo, you can change the greeting script, the, the script that it actually uses to greet you when you log into the chatbot for the first time. So all of these kinds of uh, brandings and setting changes can be done uh, once you have got the chatbot and you have configured. Now, when it comes to overall the services delivery, you know, as I said before, that it is AI powered, it's AI driven, and therefore it is easier to deploy the services because the services are built in your digital workplace advanced. All you have to do is just publish the services and the system trains itself. Um, it uses cognitive search. So this helps in extending the um, conversational experience. This helps in experiencing the natural language conversations. It's going to return uh, different kinds of results to you. Rather, it's going to actually be uh, providing you with specific um, you know, results depending upon what you type in, because sometimes your conversations would be uh, different than what other users would be. But the chatbot should be able to understand what are the intent of the users chatting with itself. So based on of those keywords, it's going to actually provide you with specific and targeted responses. Also, you can configure multiple chatbots. So it's not like you can just have one chatbot in your organization. Um, you, you create one IT chatbot. You can create an HR chatbot so that you know whenever um, a user, a business user in your organization says, hey, I, I need an HR help. I want to pay spot bonus to my employees, or I need a, a visa letter, or I need some kind of an HR help. So if you're chatting that in the IT chatbot, it's going to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to refer you to the HR chatbot and route it to the HR chatbot. Likewise, when you are um, using the HR chatbot and you ask for an IT request, it's going to say, hey, I'm going to route this to the IT um, chatbot. So that's the kind of intelligence 
it would have once you have defined them. So once you have configured these options, um, you will be able to roll out your changes. You will be able to roll out all the changes much more faster um, because it's on cloud, first of all, and it's, it's uh, AI driven, hence um, it trains itself automatically. So the chatbot will be able to accept different kinds of requests because it would have got trained automatically once you have published those services. And once you start using this, it will also generate different kinds of statistical reports. So smart reporting um, is integrated. And as all of you know, that smart reporting is the new reporting tool that we have. So smart reporting is going to provide you with various kinds of statistical reports. Example, like you have um, different types of requests submitted by users, uh, total number of requests submitted by users. If at all you are um, engaging with the live chat, it will say, you know, successful transfer to live, live, live agent or live chats, unsuccessful transfers to live chat, um, how many requests have been submitted, uh, user feedback, and how was the user experience so users will obviously give feedback to the bot so you can also generate these reports as well as many more so the tool provides you with so many different features that it becomes very easy to use it becomes very easy to configure it becomes very easy to roll out new changes um, it becomes very easy for uh, also publishing those services which will be designing in the digital workplace advanced and you can configure the chatbot with multiple tools. Um, so if you're using Digital Workplace Advanced, you can integrate it with that so that when an end user logs into the Digital Workplace end user console, they would see a small icon, be it from the phone or be it from the browser, and they can immediately start the chat conversation. So how do we set up this Helix chatbot? So we would understand in these screenshots, and I'm going to explain to you where do we go and how do we set it up. So whatever I'm talking about, talking about you know how do we create a chatbot and how do we configure a chatbot. So at the end of this presentation, you will see a demo in which I would be explaining all the details about the configurations. So over here, I'm just going to talk about uh, with a few screenshots and explain to you how things are. So for example, whenever you create a chatbot or whenever you're planning to create a chatbot, there are certain steps that you need to follow. So the first step is to create a chatbot. So you give a name, uh, example, my genie, whatever name you wish to give in your organization. And um, once you have created the chatbot, you will go to the bot and then you are going to configure the chatbot with the workspace ID and with an API key. So this point number two, the resources for the point number two or the step number two that you see over here will be from IBM Watson. So once you get that, you copy and paste those from the IBM Watson into your chatbot. And only then your chatbot becomes functional. So just creating a chatbot is as good as just creating an application without any meaning. So once you've done that, then you can go to step number three in which you can configure the chatbot to work with multiple channels. And the channels that I spoke about earlier, like Slack or Skype for Business, okay? But those are optional because most of the organizations possibly would go ahead and directly use the chatbot. You can also customize the appearance of the chatbot. You can rebrand it. You can change the logo. You can change the avatar. There is a kind of animation involved. You can disable the animations. So you can do all of those kind of rebrandings. And when the chatbot gives you options to select from in the form of a button or in the form of a menu, even you can display those in different patterns like how many buttons you want to display, how many menus you want to display, if there are X number of uh, items in the menu, how do you want that to be displayed? So you can change all of those configurations. And you would be able to see the, all the chatbots that you would have configured in the Helix platform. So all of those can be 
easily created in the chatbot. In fact, you can also configure uh, how many knowledge articles can be seen at a, at a given point of time. Um, if the user says, what are the statuses of my requests I have submitted? You know, it can also display five, six, seven. It all depends on how many you configure. So you can configure those options as well. Now, once you have configured them, you will be able to work with the chatbot. Now, let me show you some screenshots here in which we will see what are the steps for creating a chatbot. So you have the BMC chatbot here. So you go to the workspace, click on this new option, and then you click on um, the chatbot. So if you're creating a new one, you click on new, you fill up the details such as the name. And for example, in this, they have given knowledge management help desk and you save it. Once you've done this, you would need to enter the API key and the workspace ID. This would come from the IBM Watson. And um, in the IBM Watson, you're going to create a skill. And that is something which I'm going to show you a little later. Um, so once you get the skill created, you will copy the, um, the skill, the API ID, and paste it over here. And then you click on this option called Launch Chatbot. So these all are a part of the demo that you're going to see a little later on. So what is IBM Watson Assistant? Well, this is the AI tool. This is the tool that we are using, we are integrating with our chatbot to make our chatbot understand natural language. So IBM Watson has the intelligence to understand the natural language. Chatbot has the intelligence to understand all the services that you build in your organization using the digital workplace. So in the IBM Watson, you would have various configurations. And we all know what IBM Watson Assistant does. So it's a tool, it's an AI tool, which provides you with a lot of uh, chat capabilities, uh, conversational capabilities in your application. And this chatbot can also uh, be integrated with a variety of communication channels. And these are the ones which you also do with the BMC Helix chatbot as well. So these are the various components of the skill file. This is the file or this is the component that you're going to create in the Watson. So a skill is basically a container for all the artificial intelligence that has to be designed. And within the skill, you'll be creating these artifacts or these other elements, which we call uh, one is an intent, one is an entity, one is a dialogue. So there are two types of skill files. One is a dialogue skill, which is basically the conversation that happens between the chatbot and the user. And you also have a search skill. So this search skill um, is primarily used to extract information and resources from a lot of documents. So basically, we can say that it can be used to extract information from knowledge sources and provide you with a substract of it. Whereas a dialogue skill is uh, for conversations. So if I have to create all of this, I have to log in to the IBM Watson and I have to create a resource. I have to create a skill file. When you look at the skill file, the skill file is going to give you this skill ID and it'll give you an API key. Basically, the API key and the skill ID are used in your chatbot. So this is also called the workspace. Now, this is also a part of the demo, which you're going to see later on. So what is an intent? Intent is what the user want to ask the chatbot. So if I say uh, spot bonus, if I say uh, I want to give spot bonus to my employee, if I say bonus, so the intention is still the same. That is, I want to give a spot bonus to my employee. Similarly, you have an issue with your computer. So you say um, desktop error, or I have an issue with the desktop. My computer is not working. So no matter how many words or different kind of statements you use, your intention is to report the desktop issue. So that's what an intent is. 
and intent always is identified by a hash. So here you see we have a greeting intent. So no matter you say hello, you say hi, you say hey there, you say good morning, good evening, it still understands your, your intention, your intent is greeting. Entity is what the system responds back to the user. So when you say, I want to give bonus to my employee or I want to, um, I'm looking for uh, an issue uh, or I have an issue with my computer and I need to fix it, that entity is going to ask you questions. So let's take, for example, spot bonus. So it's going to ask you, who do you want to give the spot bonus to? So you answer, Amit Maiti. Um, the next question will be, okay, do you want to pay in cash or it's going to be some kind of reward? So those are called entities. And then you have a dialogue. The dialogue here is a combination of intents and your entities. And depending upon your responses, the dialogue will jump over to various nodes. So these nodes are where we are going to be building the responses from the system and from the user. Now, you need not define these intents and entities and dialogues for the services that you have in the digital workplace. It will be created automatically when you publish those services. As I said before, that we can um, configure live chat also, and we can also make use of the cognitive insight. So what does live chat do? Well, we can simply just go ahead and chat with the live agent. So how do you do that? Well, you go to the Helix Innovation Studio, you click on administration, configure my server, virtual chat configuration, because in order to get connected to, to the live agent, it has to go through the virtual chat. You provide all the virtual chat details, the username, the password, you can test it. You can do, uh, we would do that in the lab as well, in the lab demo when I'm going to show you later on. And you save it and that's all. So you are now ready to get connected to a live chat agent. Whenever you type live chat or the system tells you, do you want me to route this or connect you to a live chat? So this is how the live chat console is going to look like. You are a support staff, so you're going to look in, log in into the Helix ITSM, the Smart IT. You make yourself available. You see who is in the queue. You click on that particular user, the business user, and you start talking to the, the user. All the previous conversations which happened in the chatbot would also be copied over here. So you would see this in the demo. And these are some of the conversations that would happen. So you would continue to be able to chat with the support staff in order to fix the issue. And you can get back to the console once it is done. Um, cognitive is, again, another intelligent way of routing tickets. So you, as an administrator, will define various keys and you will give the company names. You can define various kinds of topics such as hardware issues, software issues, networking issues, application issues. So what happens is whenever you say that I need to talk to the live agent, it'll ask you, okay, uh, what kind of issue is it? Hardware, software, networking, applications, it all depends on the configuration. So the moment you choose hardware, it's going to route to your hardware queue where all the support staff and the SMEs who can fix hardware issues will be talking to you. If you say applications, it's going to go to the application. So you can design such kind of things with the help of Cognitive. So that's how you connect to the live agent. Uh, chatbot can communicate with other BMC applications. So the digital workplace application is also there, which you will integrate with. And all you have to do is just go to the Helix Innovation Studio and enable the integration by clicking on Digital Workplace, provide the details, and you will be all set to use the chatbot from the Digital Workplace console. And as I was saying that, you know, you, you can publish the chats um, services, the chat enabled services, you can do that. So all of these services are going to be built in your digital workplace, okay, advanced. And therefore, to make 
the Watson, IBM Watson and the chatbot understand all of the services that you have built, like, for example, desktop issue, email issue, login issue, VPN issues, and it should understand the natural language conversation and the technical words, you have to just publish them. And how do you do that? You just have to go again to your chatbot, you go to your actions, click on publish chat enable service, choose which chatbot you would like to publish the services to, and the chat bot will make it ready. So now we are going to see a demo of the configuration of the chatbot, the setting up of chatbot. So in this demo, I'm going to show you how you create a new chatbot. How do you configure the chatbot with IBM Watson's API key and workspace ID? How users would chat with the chatbot? What are the different kind of responses that the chatbot gives to them? How do we configure the chatbot and the live agent so that if uh, end user asks for a live agent, then it will directly connect them to a live agent or to a support staff. So in order to create the chatbot application and configure, I'm going to log in to the Innovation Studio. And I will log in as Alan. Once you have logged in as Alan, you will land up and Workspace is going to be the default tab, which is going to be selected. So under the Workspace tab, you have BMC Chatbot. This is already created. And we have chatbots. So we have an HR chatbot, we have a BMC chatbot, we have IT chatbot, and this is just another chatbot. If you do not wish to keep any chatbots, you can just delete them. So you can create as many chatbots you want. You can have an IT chatbot for all your IT needs. You can have an HR for your HR needs. So if at all I have to create a new chatbot, this is where we click on give a name my genie, for example. Click on save. The moment you click on save, it brings you to the My Genie chatbot screen where you click on new in order to add the API key and the workspace ID. So from where do we get the API key and the workspace ID? We get it from the IBM Watson. So let me just show you how we get that. So in the IBM Watson assistant, you will have to create a resource. And in this demo, we have already got it created. So I'm going to just use one of these resources. So I'm going to choose BMC Education Dev, for example. And I'm going to launch Watson Assistant. And I have Watson Assistant 2C, 2D, so I can actually borrow the API key from one of these, or I can create a new assistant. So I'm gonna click on Watson Assistant 2C, click on these options, click on View API Details, and use this skill ID and the API key or the workspace ID. So you just need to copy and paste this. So if I have to create a new skill, all I have to do is just go back, create a new skill, whether you want to create a dialogue or a search skill, as we discussed this earlier. So I'm going to create a dialogue skill, click on next, and give a name here, my new IT skill, languages US, English, create a dialogue skill, and immediately it asks me to create intents, entities, and dialogue but we would go back to the previous page and we will copy my new id skill and the api details which is this skill id and this api key so here is where we would add first the api key needs to be added and then you need to add the workspace id which is this skill id so I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back to my chatbot and we would launch the chatbot, the IT or the HR and see it 
how it responds to various requests of the user. So I'm going to come to this IT chatbot. I'm going to click on launch chatbot. This is the avatar. You can change this. You can stop the animation as well. You can give any name you want. You can change the logo. You can change the greeting as well. So how do we change the greeting? For example, here. I'm Helix, your BMZ chatbot, here to help. How can I assist you? For example, save it and then launch the chatbot. I'm going to close the previous one and how can I assist you? So here I say, hello. So the chatbot greets me, will fetch up fetch all the details which are stored in the database and now I ask you know I need some help maybe um, issue something like I have a VPN issue so it says what is the problem so it understands my natural English language I say unable to connect Thank you. I will submit your request. Could you confirm if the details are correct? Yes, they are. So it submits a request with a request ID. Now, how did the chatbot understand this issue and this English language? They understood this because I have already published this service, which is designed in my digital workplace catalog in the chatbot. And once you publish a service, it automatically creates the intents and the entities and the dialogues in IBM Watson. So this is something which I'm going to show you a little later. So once it's done, I can go back and click on that. I can see the issue that I have reported. I can go back to the chat. Now it says, share your experience with me or continue by asking me something else. So since this was good conversation, I say, excellent. Now you replied, excellent, excellent. What do you like the most? Everything. Okay, is there anything I can help you with? Yes, please describe your issue. Let's say I want to um, give one of my employees spot bonus. So I'm just going to choose spot bonus. Let's see if it understands my request. It says, let me transfer you to the HR chatbot who can help you with this question. Hi, Alan, HR chatbot here to help. You asked spot bonus. What is the full name of the employee you want to give to spot bonus to? You know, I just say my name. I enter my name and maybe cash, $500. Why did Amit might deserve the bonus? Um, let's say he participated in Engage. So you want to give the cash award and here it says, what is the full name of the nominated employee? Is that correct? Well, it, my name doesn't show up here because there is some issue. Never mind. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I will submit your request. Could you confirm the details are correct? Yes, they are correct. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Yes. Please explain your issue. So it keeps on asking me those. Now, once we have identified that the chat box is working fine. We will be able to request anything to the chatbot. And if those services are published in the chatbot, the chatbot is going to respond back. Now that we have already configured the chatbot, I want to also show you how do we configure the chatbot with the live agent. So in order to do that, we have to go back to our Helix administration console here. Click on administration and then configure my server. You scroll down, click on virtual chat configuration. So you connect to the live agent through the virtual chat. So you need to enter the virtual chat URL. You need to enter the AR administrator username. You need to enter the password. Right now, since I have not made any changes, I would not be able to test. So I will just enter or re-enter the password. Click on test. It says connection successful. So I'm now connected to the virtual chat. Save it. 
once this is done I'm going to go back to the other console which is smart IT so I'm going to close everything and maybe I will just log out of smart IT and log in back just to avoid any session timeout issues or simply click on smart IT to open and here I log in as Mary password so Mary is logged into smart IT and clicks on live chat Oops, it gives an invalid username and password so I'm going to just log in back yep here we are and Mary is available so in the virtual chat configuration we have done this and we will go back to our workspace to launch the chatbot and we go to chatbot so Alan has logged into the chatbot so IT chatbot launch the chatbot well as an end user you really don't have to log in here you will directly launch this from your digital workplace console your self-service console so hi again and I say uh, desktop issue I really want it not to understand and give me an error it says an internal error has occurred while performing the chat operation which is fine so I say okay live agent so sometimes you would manually type the live agent if you're not satisfied with the responses or if the system doesn't understand and doesn't respond to you it might ask you for live agent as well it will tell you should I transfer to a live agent so in this case I have typed in live agent so it says hardware or a software now you can also configure the cognitive keywords and the cognitive search capability you can define various queues and based on what you select over here you will be routed to that queue to those support staff who will assist you with hardware and software so that is an example here so I'm going to click on desktop issue so it's uh, hardware let's say so I click on hardware and it says please wait while I connect to your live agent from here on responses to you will be from a system generated message or from a live agent at any point of time if you want to end the live chat just give this command slash end live chat and it says you are in you are number one in line your estimated wait is more than a minute you can configure these settings now I will go to the smart IT I have logged in as Mary Mary could see Alan is waiting in the queue so Mary simply clicks on this clicks on accept to start the chat conversation hi Alan I understand you have an issue with your desktop okay so all of these previous chat with the chatbot is also copied over here and now let me go back to my chatbot and see if I receive the message from Mary yes I do now let's say you know I have got my issue fixed and live chat I can do that chat with agent has closed and you are now connected with chatbot so this is how you perform a live chat with the support staff and in Mary's console also this is gone now coming back to how the system understands this natural language well first of all it's because of the IBM Watson API key and the workspace ID in addition to that you have something called skills you have intents you have entities and you have dialogue now you wouldn't be creating those manually for your services that you have designed in the chatbot all what you need to do is just go to the IBM Watson and this is where we are let's say for example I go to my IT chatbot and if you see here I have intents such as guest Wi-Fi you know live agent report an issue VPN issue that's the one which uh, you know I had typed in application access and all of these now these get created automatically even the entities okay 
and the dialogues. Of course, you can go ahead and make changes to these dialogues. So these things get created automatically when you publish a chat, when you publish a chat from the chatbot. So how do you do that? Let me just show you that. So we go here, you click on actions, publish chat enabled service. So you pick up whether you want to publish in HR, when you publish into IT like this, it will show you, you know, the various services that you have built in your digital workplace catalog, be it IT, be it your HR, you click on next and you publish them. Once you do that, your intents and your entities and all of the other components, the associated components will be created and the chatbot is going to be capable of understanding your natural language. So if you type in, I have a desktop issue or my desktop is not working, all of those, it will still understand that your intent is to report an issue with the desktop. So that's how you configure the chatbot. You configure the chatbot to talk to the live agent. You configure the chatbot for the end users. You configure the chatbot with the help of the IBM Watson IDs and configure them. So I hope that helps you to understand the various configuration set. Okay, so that was the demo. So, you know, uh, we have this training already. So if at all you're really interested in going ahead and, uh, you know, you want to take this training, there is a chatbot20.x training, which is a three-day instructor-led course, and most probably I'll be the one. And there is an one-day uh, IBM Watson training also, which is led by the IBM Watson education team that provides more details about it. So, yep, that will be all. And thank you for uh, listening to this